Hello and welcome to another episode of Archaeobotany. In this episode we'll cover a brief history of perfume in the ancient world, the 19th century, and modern times. Let's get started. We will start with the ancient Mediterranean and Near East. In the land of Nubia, there was heavy influence from their neighbors, the Egyptians, as well as various Hellenistic and Asiatic imports from other countries and kingdoms. The Nubian people back in the day were known for making finished products from raw materials, which is what they imported so they can export finished goods. Perfume and incense being one such major example. These people obtained many raw ingredients for themselves as well in order to make finished perfumes. They collected frankincense from the boswella tree and myrrh resin from the comifera tree. And based on current evidence, this culture has been collecting resin from these two trees to make perfumes since at least the Neolithic, although it became more common as time went on. Perfume was of great importance to this ancient group of people since many tombs found had jugs of perfume surrounding it. This is possibly for funeral purposes, although only for those of high status. Further evidence suggests that they were used for libations to pre-treat the body for burial. They are also great at making different types of flasks to have faces portrayed on it alongside various other images. Imitations were often made by the poor or middle class individuals within that society in hopes of sharing the same fate as the aristocrats and the kings of that time. Most of these Funeral rituals, with the exception of lighting incense, came directly from Egypt. The lighting of incense, however, predates the Egyptian Empire. And the incense burners have been found in Nubia that are dated between the 4th and 3rd millennium BC. It was very likely that Egypt imported most of their incense from Nubia. Although frankincense and myrrh was a primary, primary perfume export to Egypt, they also produce perfume from other species, such as species from the Acacia genus and Santalum genus, and a great many other plants, although the latter two were often imported as well to Egypt. Now onto the perfumes of ancient Egypt. The Egyptians were the first known individuals to pioneer the distillation of perfume based on the work of Pliny although slightly more primitive than what we have right now. Prior to that, most perfumes were made by mixing the scents and preserving them in oil or fat. And for the majority of human history, perfume was preserved in such a fashion. The ancient Greeks would obtain a plant called balanos from Syria or Egypt to produce a perfume by preserving it in olive oil or almond oil. Egypt exported many raw materials used to make perfume to different parts of the Greek world, such as once again balanus, various types of tree resins such as myrrh, bitter almonds, olive oil to a certain degree, cardamoms, sweet rush, honey, and wine, as well as balsam, glabrium, and turpentine resin. These compounds were also used to make perfume in Egypt as well. A special perfume called the late or spate, made exclusively in Egypt, was made using the fruit of a palm called adipose. Another essential oil was made from Kyperium, another Egyptian plant. These writings from various Greek and Roman authors seem to be confirmed since remnants of these herbs, spices, and resins and flowers were found in various tombs throughout Egypt. Eight specimens of perfume jars have been analyzed and they found remnants of storax incense, turpentine, resins, myrrh, a plant called bitumen of Judea, henna, a mixture of various aromatic vegetables and palm wine, as well as a mixture of cassia and tamarind with grape wine. Now on to the perfumes of 19th century France. Before we get into French perfume, we must take a full summary of the tracing of European perfume. During the 5th century, an Arab perfumer, Avancina, invented the distillation of rose water, which became the major scent in the Arab world for quite some time. 
After the Arabs conquered Spain, Avicina set up shop there, spreading the fragrance everywhere. After the Crusades, the Crusaders obtained the information of how to distill rose water, as well as various types of oriental scents, and brought them back to the rest of Europe to make use of them, allowing the first perfume made through alcohol distillation to be spread across the world. In 1390, the French company Grass, initially a glove factory, began making perfumes combining the mix of jasmine, orange, and tuberose to make perfume. The glove making and perfume industry was not separate until 1724. King Louis XV made the perfume court where all his courtiers would change perfume every day. The oldest still existing fragrance was made in 1729. It's called Eau de Cologne since it was made in Cologne, France. Marie Antoinette, you may have heard of her, was also a big fan of perfumes. During the French Revolution, perfumes and other luxury items were considered verboten. Although perfume a la guillotine enjoyed some short-term popularity. But once Napoleon Bonaparte showed up, the information on how to make perfume was passed down to most people and perfume became a symbol of hard work and labor rather than luxury. This in combination with Napoleon's own fondness for cologne restored perfume back to its previous success. Perfume also became a means to decorate things, for the average man to make his house and wife into status symbols, and as a result perfume became primarily used for females. Napoleon had a very big fondness for fruit and herb slash flower scents. For instance, Eau de Cologne was made from a mixture of rosemary, orange flower, bergamot, and lemon. And he went through 60 gallon bottles a month, using them for many different purposes. He used it in bath water, mixed it with wine, taken it as a mouthwash, and even ate it on sugar. Napoleon's first wife, Josephine, was very fond of animal-based scents such as musk, civic, and certain spices like vanilla and ambergris. Smells were disliked by the emperor. After a disagreement, Josephine had a bit of revenge by splashing that perfume all across the room, and their combined scents still hung in the air 70 years later. Make sure you have a happy wife so you can have a happy life. In order to increase the amount of variety of perfumes, Emperor Napoleon split up the glove and perfume industry into two separate industries. And from the 1950s onward, new perfumes made from different plants came into vogue. This included perfumes made from patchouli, sandalwood, velveter, and lang lang. Which brings us to the next stage of perfume history. After the French Revolution, there was a decline in perfume making for obvious reasons. But after the dust settled, perfume made a comeback and the perfume industry grew from there. In the 18th century, large flower farms were developed to supply the different Parisian perfume manufacturers throughout the region. The Kiris factory was established in 1768, followed by Lothair in 1795, and Rohr in 1820, and Mero in 1832. In the mid-1800s, Robertet Perfume House was also established, and the Societe de Perfume, Naturel de Cannes, I'm definitely mispronouncing all of that, my French sucks. Well, it's actually non existent, so sue me. Was established in 1883. None of these perfume houses, however, could fully manufacture enough perfume to meet demand for every single essence. As a result, most of the perfume houses worked together and traded scents amongst each other. However, by 1914, 30 raw material suppliers were beginning to produce synthetic compounds thanks to Emperor Napoleon encouraging research into organic chemistry, which allowed the isolation of different scents such as geraninol and menthol, extracted from roses and mints respectively. Chemists later on tried to recreate these chemicals using fossil materials like coal and oil. One example of this discovery process was the discovery that phenyl ethyl alcohol 
a derivative of benzene, could act as a duplicate to the scent of a rose, and benzyl acetate, derived from tutiline, could replicate the scent of jasmine. Continuing on with that, chemists continued to invent different chemicals, such as vanillin, to produce smoke and leather scents, and ionin, which could smell like violets. This allowed perfumers to create different variations in scent, greater than what was available before with just essential oils. The first modern style perfume we know of was called Jiki, and was created by Ami Gourlain. It was launched in 1889, the same year that the Eiffel Tower was made. Rather than being an attempt to create an imitation or preservation of the scent of a flower, it was a composition of both natural and synthetic ingredients used to make a multi-layered perfume that could be used to elicit certain emotions. This made the perfumer both artist and scientist. One of the early feminists of his time, perfumer Paul Porat, attempted to sell a new perfume as a complement to his clothing. Later on, another clothes maker slash perfumer called Gabriel Coco Chanel pushed the idea to its logical conclusion, creating a perfume called Chanel No. 5 in 1921, creating the Chanel Perfume Company. And so perfume and fashion became combined together, like gloves and perfume before it. And many of the other major perfume companies of today showed up around that same time period. Well, that covers everything. Thank you for watching.